Hey, STEM students, Mr. Santella here, bringing you your social emotional lesson for this Wednesday. We have teamed up with a company called Cultures of Dignity. And this year, we're gonna bring you a new curriculum um, around dignity. So in order to start that, this lesson is gonna be about some vocabulary um, that we're gonna try to have everybody in the school use. But in order to do that, we all have to have a common understanding of what these vocabulary words mean. Now, one of the words is not dignity. So we're gonna to have to figure out what dignity means based on the 10 elements of dignity. Our next lesson will be a little bit more specific to the word dignity, but today it's about vocabulary around the word dignity. All right, let's get started. So, why are we doing this? How is this gonna help us? Well, the elements of dignity help you get your needs met. They help you name your feelings and have better relationships. And you know, throughout your life, you're gonna have relationships all around you. You know, you'll have relationships with your family, with your friends. I mean, even your dog and you, you have a relationship. So we're just trying to help so that you can have better relationships throughout your life. Now. The skills we're gonna work on are not just skills for school, they're skills for life. All right, so the 10 elements help us define what dignity means to us, have vocabulary to explain our point of view, especially when we feel hurt. And that's not like, oh, I fell and hurt my arm, it's the feeling of hurt. Someone has hurt you with their words or with their actions. Um, these 10 elements also help us find compassion for ourselves and others. Now, compassion is one of the four C's that we use at STEM Lab. These elements also help make conflict, conflict less scary because you're gonna have conflict in your life no matter what. And that can just be a disagreement. Now, it doesn't have to be something that is very negative or pushing and shoving, right? Conflict just means you don't agree with something and you're gonna try to find a way to solve that conflict, okay? These elements also help us tell the difference between intention and impact. We'll get more into that. And the 10 elements also help us get out of conversations that don't go anywhere. So you're having a conversation, trying to come to an agreement or a solution or whatever, and you're just not getting there, okay? All right, let's begin. So our first word is recognition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the word, I'll read the definition that's here, and then I'll give you my definition um, to maybe help you understand it another way, okay? So as I said, the first word is recognition. So what this means is it's to validate others for their talents, hard work, thoughtfulness, and help. It means to be generous with praise, and it means to give credit to others for their contributions, idea, and experience. So to give someone recognition is to say, oh, that was an amazing paper that you just wrote, or I love the way you solved that math problem. It really helped me understand it. That's giving someone recognition. All right, acknowledgement. So acknowledgement is give people our full attention by listening, validating, and responding. All right, so we all know what listening is. We know what responding is, right? You're, you're saying something um, to what they're saying or you're responding to what they're doing. Validating is giving them a, um, you're, you're acknowledging that it, that it happened. So it validates that this happened, all right? Number three, benefit of the doubt. And I'm sure you guys have heard this term used a lot and maybe you didn't really know what it means but it means you treat people as trustworthy and you assume that others have good motives and are acting with integrity. So integrity is a big word that I use a lot as an educator and as a parent. So integrity means doing the right thing when no one is looking. So to give someone the benefit of the doubt is to, tell, is to assume that what they're doing is positive, okay? So you're not just gonna judge them and say, hmm, they're probably doing something that they shouldn't be. That's not benefit of the doubt, all right? So you assume positive intent. 
All right, inclusion. Now this is a big word um, that is, is super important as we move forward with our cultures of dignity. So inclusion is make others feel that they belong at all levels of relationships, families, community, organiza organization, and nation. So inclusion is you truly make everybody feel they are included. Their thoughts are heard, their feelings are heard, right? You are including them in everything. All right. Safety. Now, this is a big one. This is something that we as humans just have to have in order to feel um, to have a connection with anybody or to even be able to learn or understand. We have to feel safe. OK, so safety is to put people at ease at two levels physically. Right. Feel free from bodily harm. So, you know, you feel safe out on the playground. Right. That no one's going to push you over. Right. And then psychologically, you feel free from shame or humiliation. You feel free to speak without fear of retribu retribution. So retribution means you're afraid. Uh, retribution means that somebody's going to um, do something against you for something you just did or, or something you just said or did. OK, so we want to feel safe physically so that we're not going to like get hurt. I'm not going to break my arm. And then psychologically, I'm gonna feel okay, I'm gonna feel safe to say and feel and believe what I, what, what makes me feel good, okay? And not worry about people um, coming back at me and saying negative things about the way I feel, the way I see things, or my beliefs. All right, understanding. Now, you may think, well, I know what understanding means. Well, let's take a deeper dive. Believe that what others think matters. Okay, so to say, well, what, you, what your friend is thinking, that's really important to me. I am listening and what you say matters to me, okay? And then give people a chance to explain their perspective. So if somebody has um, a perspective that you don't believe in, for example, Raider fans, you guys all know I'm a huge Bronco fan, right? But I would love, if I had true understanding, I would let a Raider fan explain why they like the Raiders. So Mrs. Doppler, for example, she's a big Raider fan. Well, she's from California. Well, that makes sense, right? But if I didn't give her a chance to explain that perspective, then I wouldn't really be having understanding of why she's a Raider fan. All right. And then listening. So we're prepared to change what we are. We're prepared to be changed by what we hear. So to have understanding is having an open mind, right? I'm listening so that I can, I, I'm prepared to change what I'm thinking. You might convince me that pizza is the best food in the world where I think it's cheesecake. But if I'm not willing to listen to you and change what I think, then I'm not really having understanding for you. All right, acceptance of identity, okay? So you approach people as neither inferior no, nor superior. So you're not saying, well, this person is less than me or this person is more than me, right? They're, they're not more important or less important. We are equal, okay? Give others the freedom to express themselves without fear of being judged. Again, this is that open mind, right? Your open mind to whatever people like, whatever makes them feel good, whatever makes them feel happy, right? We're not judging them, okay? And we need to acknowledge that people's race, religion, gender, class, sexual orientation, age, disability are the core of their identities. So all of those things that I just mentioned, they make us who we are. And that's amazing because if we were all the same, think about how boring this world would be, right? So understanding all of these helps us be different, which is beautiful, right? It is so beautiful that we are all different. Fairness, big one. Treat people justly with equality and equity according to agreed upon laws and rules, okay? So equality is everybody gets the same thing. Equity is everybody gets what they need, okay? So those are two terms that people confuse a lot. But think about equality has the word equal in it, so everybody is getting the equal amount of something. And equity is you're getting what you need. Now, I wear glasses. 
Does that mean everybody should have glasses? No, that'd be equality. But if everybody, if, if you need glasses, then that's equity, okay? Independence, okay, something that when I was a fourth grade teacher I, teacher, I really tried to instill in my students to be independent. But let's see what the definition is here for um, our cultures of dignity. Empower people to act on their own behalf so that they feel in control of their lives and experience a sense of hope and possibility. So to give someone independence really empowers them to do things for themselves. And, and when you do things for yourselves, you're, you feel in control. And when you have that control, it feels really good when you're successful. And you know what? It also feels okay when you fail because you did that and you can get yourself out of that too. It's a learning opportunity. Remember, failure is the first attempt in learning. F-A-I-L. Okay? So independence is so important in um, growing as a person and just being able to take care of yourself as well. And last is accountability. So accountability is you take responsibility for your actions. If you have violated someone's dignity, apologize and make a commitment to change hurtful behaviors. So accountability is, okay, I'm sorry I tripped you in the hallway. I thought it would be funny and it wasn't and I see that it hurt you. I took away your dignity and I apologize. Not, huh, I didn't do that, it, it wasn't me. What, I, I didn't do it. So accountability is taking responsibility for the actions and the words and um, that you express, okay? So having accountability is very, very important, all right? Both in, as, a, as a student, as a scholar, as a friend, but just in, in life in general, okay? All right, so those were the 10 elements of self-reflection. Now that was quick, there was a lot. So that's why I made a video so you can go back and review them, okay? Now, what I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna have you answer these three questions in a Flipgrid video. Now the link for the Flipgrid video is gonna be in your Schoology advisory class. Um, and the three questions you're going to answer are, which dignity vocabulary words matter the most to you and why? So it could be uh, independence or it could be safety, okay? So why do those words matter the most to you, okay? What or which dignity vocabulary words are you not getting? And I don't mean are you not understanding, but are you not receiving? So are you not feeling safe, okay? And which dignity vocabulary words do you want to show other people? Okay, so of all of those words, which one are you like, you know what? I need to be better at doing this. I need to be better at doing this one, okay? So that's what I would like from your Flipgrid video. Like I said, your link and the, or, and the code will be in your advisory class. If you're in fourth or fifth grade, it'll just be in your Schoology class, okay? All right, scholars, I know that was a lot, but that's why I made a video. So you can go back and watch this pretty face as much as you need to go ahead and make sure that those vocabulary words you understand. Also, if you don't understand the vocabulary words with the definitions they gave and my explanation, you can ask another adult or you can always look it up on um, the, the interwebs, as they call it, I think. That's what the kids say. Anyways, all right. So until I see you guys again, have a good rest of your week.